Good morning. Oh, good morning. a bit, bit, bit dull good mornings, but it is Sunday morning early. Um, <clears throat> tell you all the best editing techniques, it's just going to ask you to think about the material that you actually put on. And as circumstances usually goes, there's one clip I wanted for the end of the PowerPoint and I got home last night and brought the SVHS video machine down into the, uh, into the editing room and the first problem I had was that the tape wouldn't go in. Turned it over and I had a piece of licorice instead of a belt. So the ne luckily I had a, uh, a new belt in a packet and then I saw that the unit had got a nine pin remote control on the back. So I plugged in my nine pin lead. Promptly we had no power on the machine because the uh, nine pin plug I'd got had earthed out the standby five volts in the video machine and after some pouring over the service manual I found the fusible resistor on the servo board and finally got it into PowerPoint and went to bed at half past two all in the aid of ATV now then it's all about planning isn't it Colin you do have clips prepared for the Sunday net SQ of things you've been doing and want to show people, don't you? I do. You do? Right. All I'm suggesting is, before you come on the air, how's about just doing a little bit of planning and getting some things ready to show. Even some JPEGs on a computer will, will, uh, will help and uh, we'll go into some of the hardware bits and pieces in a minute. So planning is fairly important. And actually, if you're doing a commercial video production, which was one of the things I do, the pen is a lot cheaper than getting the camera out. So uh, that's the planning stage. Now, in your shack, you need one of the items on the left-hand side to play some material out from. <coughs> whether it be a Windows box or a, an Apple box. And then we need to do something with that video. Well, the middle column there, we've got um, some sw a switcher, we've got a little tiny mixer, and at the bottom we have our... So that's a typical shack setup and then you can go from something really simple like a security camera you don't need to spend lots of money on your camera or if you want to spend lots of money on your camera you can use a better one generally speaking the resolution of the camera <coughs> is only makes a marginal difference um, I certainly found that on 70 SEMs for instance digital or 23 SEMs digital more especially um, a three chip standard definition camera does look better than a single chip one so and the Panasonic um, MS90 I've got which I use for walkabout on TV that's just got a single chip in it and I've got another camera with uh, three chips in and the picture is noticeably better at the other end and it's always the rule that you have a better source than the transmission system and it will look better at the other end and that goes for compression or anything like that we're going to do to the signal afterwards now actually getting video out of these devices there's a very simple wiring diagram for the VGA out but that of course assumes that you've got the resolution that your um, video device will take that you can set the computer to. Um, for instance today we've had to drop down to 1024 by 768 which is quite common to use for video devices from the laptop otherwise the box to go to the streaming won't take 1920 by 1080 we get a blinking light on the front panel so you do have to wind the resolution down to an appropriate level 
some of these boxes were like this one here on the bottom left. Uh, by 1200 and then scale it down to um, uh, the uh, standard definition 720 by 576. Um, one of the things I've got a, one of these boxes on a computer out the, out the back and I've got a program called Masterplay on it and I can load all my club film, video club films up on there and it will go through and play them like a carousel and the chip in there was absolutely diabolical. If you put a test card up on the computer screen, you couldn't see many of the resolution gratings. And in the end, what I did, because it was an S-video one, um, I put a, an amplifier with an increasing gain as frequency went up between the output pin of the chip and the output socket on the, um, on the box. So some of them really aren't all that good. Um, the problem is you've really got to get one to try it to see how well the manufacturers uh, actually, actually done it. And then there's um, HDMI, of course. This laptop has HDMI <coughs> and um, DVI on the back, so that gives you um, a VGA as well. And uh, the, uh, the Mac department have little boxes like this. So that can be turned into something like that if you want to do some microsurgery in the, in the case and of course some of the um, video cards have an, um, a video out socket on the back that is becoming less popular as time goes on um, we're seeing all sorts of things disappear from laptops no um, optical drive um, certainly uh, firewire input for the old DV camcorders has is, is, is more or less disappeared and serial ports so we're just left with USB and some of the more modern laptops have got um, Thunderbolt on like the, uh, the, the Apple Mac series um, interesting if you wanted to really get um, a Gorilla PC with Thunderbolt on it um, the Apple um, has a single 12-core um, processor in as the maximum. That's the new thing that looks like a little oil drum. And um, the, uh, if you look at all the motherboards that are around at the moment, you can have a single processor motherboard with Thunderbolt on, but you can't have a dual processor motherboard with Thunderbolt on unless you buy an HP Z820 computer in which case um, you will be parting if you put two 12 core Xeons in there you'll be parting with about £6,000 um, and you have to put a Thunderbolt card in and the reason that the, the um, PCI Express <coughs> Thunderbolt cards won't work in the, other mother, in the other motherboards is simple it needs a bus synchronising socket which has to be available on the motherboard Call it, called a GIO socket and without that the Thunderbolt card won't work so there's not many of those sort of things around you only need that sort of um, uh, computer if you're going to start editing um, uh, 4K at 50p because that's really quite strenuous to do we heard yesterday Mike Cox talking about 120p which uh, doesn't bear of all a lot of bits to, to grunge to do that um, and of course graphics cards these days are, are getting quite uh, quite sophisticated so moving on if we actually want to get some video in and out of our computer this is just a sample of some of the the boards that are available to, to, or external devices to get available this um, pinnacle one um, in the corner there has gives you some uh, some firewire ports and into that socket there you plug the breakout box which comes comes with it and that gives you analog s video and composite video um, and matrox uh, also also make a, a box and that one's uh, got hdmi in and out 
and then black magic you start seeing that these things are USB 3 and not all computers have got USB 3 sockets on um, but to do HD you really need a USB 3 socket and certainly to do the lower resolutions in 4K you need a, a USB 3 socket. Then the Hallpage you've got uh, another little um, PCI Express card and Blackmagic Design. They've just gone for um, HDMI in and out which is fine because that covers DSLR cameras as, as well. Now hopefully you can read that but there's um, these are the sort of varieties of, of video editing software around so what I'm encouraging people to do for ATV is to go out with the camcorder and record something and come back and put it together into a little sequence and when you've got your net night or your repeater night um, with hundreds of people on the uh, on the stream Colin uh, watching the KO, watching the KLB show um, you actually need to spend a little bit of time before you get editing it now actually there's very little excuse really Win Windows comes with Windows Movie Maker is it brilliant? No does it edit some vi clips together? Yes and does it cost you any money? No so there is no excuse for a Windows box not to do it and then iMovie comes free with Apple and that's better than Windows Movie Maker um, and it also costs you nothing so excuses for amateurs that's good amateur price that is naught pounds <laughs> <laughs> we've sold things before at junk sales just for the mains plug well there's a pounds worth of mains plug on there take it away <coughs> then we start looking at other software packages around Lightworks they sort of tried to take over the world and um, if you want the full version it's £179 and that uh, um, you've got a problem with no output hardware support in that particular package so it led you to clip, uh, some clips together export it to the hard disk and then you've got it to play off the computer later but it doesn't come out live on a piece of uh, hardware that we've looked at before um, Media 100 is something that was around, um, been around for quite, quite a number of years. Um, it, was it was originally started on the Apple. It then had a foray into PC, um, into the Windows world, but it, it was hardware based. And unfortunately, I bought a set of hardware from there and it did four layers of editing in real time on a fairly ancient compact. Um, workstation so it really didn't need the, the computer to do much of the work but like all these things they spent so much money developing it they went out of business and then Boris um, Effects bought them and they said ah oh, but we're a hardware we're not a hardware company so of course the hardware was dropped so but they've, they've um, moved on um, back or we'll move back into the Apple world um, they do support 4K editing and red code and here the, Co the uh, Kona 3G from, uh, from AJA is of course an extra item you need to buy if you want some output sockets and I can only see a US price online for that at the moment nearly a thousand dollars uh, Pinnacle Studio is another one which uh, uh, people use only £49 if you want the um, starter version or £99 but there isn't a trial available you have to decide to buy it um, I must say I do like um, things that you can actually try first to see first of all if your computer is up to it um, before you actually spend any money um, I use this one here but there's a, a cut down version 
this really is the home based version of it um, and there's a limit on professional output codecs because of course they have to be licensed in the software so you, when you buy the, so the, the professional version you're actually paying for licenses to use various, um, <coughs> various codecs um, and uh, that's £142 there is a free trial and uh, I happen to sell this one as well and then that one is the professional version of it which is up to 7.31 and um, it does 4K and there's all sorts of hardware you can, uh, you can use with that but that's quite an expensive package um, and there is a free trial then Adobe uh, with uh, their CC suite and of course that is a full service if you want the full suite um, you're going to have to um, pay much more than that, it's £48 a month and if you just want the editing software it's £7.49 a month. The advantage of that is you've always got the latest version of their software. The disadvantage is you never own it. So it's up to people to decide on that uh, as to whether they want to have something on a rental basis. And if you were away for six months somewhere and didn't have any internet connection, what you would find is it would become unlicensed. You have to actually go online to keep it up, to keep it, uh, keep it licensed. Um, and some people don't have any internet connection on their editing computers deliberately. They keep it well away from the, from the web because actually what they don't have often is antivirus on those computers because it gets in the way and slows things down. Um, there's a way around that. What you actually do is get into the antivirus software and put some exceptions in for your editing software and then it doesn't start poking at it and getting in the way. Um, in the just whilst we mention antivirus, in the Apple world, providing you keep your operating system up to date, and that means um, downloading the latest updates from Apple, you are fairly well protected on viruses as it's built into the operating system. Windows, of course, you have to keep doing the Microsoft updates, and Windows XP is no longer supported, of course. Uh, moving on, we've got Sony Vegas 13, um, one of our video club members that I'm chairman of um, has, uh, has that, in fact two or three people have it, at, and he's just bought a new Dell workstation and is finding it's working, uh, working very well. Um, again, you've got uh, two versions, 239 or 479. Um, Avid Media Composer seems to be a bit behind, behind the, the curve really with all the other manufacturers around and it was interesting to note at the um, Broadcast Video Expo um, exhibition uh, last time the Apple Final Cut Pro stand was full the Adobe stand was full and there wasn't a soul in the Avid stand at all so are they losing market share we wonder um, again they've done a, well they've done two versions actually you can an outright buy for, for £11.26 or £46 per calendar month for £2 cheaper than Adobe and of course um, it's HD only at the moment their software so they haven't caught up with the, the latest uh, frame sizes and finally now Final Cut um, Pro on 3 and um, Chris up the back there is still using Final Cut 7 um, which is perfectly good but of course Final Cut 10 took you away from a traditional timeline which we're all used to and you've got these um, icons which you edit with on the, on, uh, on the screen so quite a different method of, uh, of editing when it first came out it was a bit of a nightmare because the BBC of course had bought a load of apples and um, they found it was a, um, not very clever they had to upgrade because um, being happy with it because it ain't broke so don't fix it so um, 
and the modern hardware, um, something like an i7-4700 um, computer, a minimum of about 12 gig of RAM, and of course the disk drives. Um, a lot of laptops come with solid state disk drives now, but of course you've got 450 megabytes if you're lucky on there, and you really need to have a laptop with a fast USB 3 on it um, with an external disk drive to get the data rate you need. Um, but uh, this particular laptop on the table here has got a system drive and two drives in RAID 0 for video. So there's three hard drives in, uh, in that one. And that was a top of range gaming <coughs> laptop at the time with, a, with an i7 processor but needless to say it's now fairly behind the times. <coughs> 